My name is Russell Mason, Vice President of ASPE and your MC for tonight. But before I start, as usual, I'd like to say if, uh, everyone, if everyone could keep their devices set to mute to reduce background noise during the presentation. That'd be great, thanks. And any questions during the session, please type them into the chat function of your Zoom screen and our ASPE president and moderator for tonight, Sue Brunialti, will post questions to Mike at the end of the presentation. This session, like our previous sessions, will be recorded and uploaded to the ASPE YouTube channel. So if you'd like to revisit it tonight, or if you just want to have a look at what's going on in the previous session in the series, you can find them all there. Jump on YouTube and search for Team ASPE or follow the links from our website. I'd also like to welcome our Auslan interpreter tonight, but tonight, uh, Sarah Kennywell, who'll be uh, joining us, and thank you for your support. Tonight's speaker, well, we have our longtime committee member and ASPE marketing guru, Melbourne-based Mike Reed. And tonight's presentation called 3000 Streets, where we, where we get to hear about the background story and Mike's history with photography and touching on how his 40 plus years as a film editor influenced his street photography. And also we'll get to listen to what projects he's been keeping himself busy with during this lockdown. This includes the curation of two books. I thought it was one, but it's two. He's been a busy boy and a company exhibition scheduled for early next year. Lockdowns permitting, fingers crossed there, Mike. So on behalf of the ASPE committee, I'd like to welcome all members and guests to this presentation. So without further ado, it's over to you, Mike. Cheers. Thank you. Here I am. <laughs> well, I owe it um, my success, I guess, to my books behind me. I mean, I can't stress so much that you should always read books and look at books. And that's what I've done. I mean, I was really terrible at the start, but over the years, I've grown better and better. Um, as I say, pressed, uh, practice makes perfect, but uh, with me, I just have to do it again and again and again and again. Anyway, I didn't, um, I wasn't handed a camera when I was three or five or nine by my grandfather. Um, I actually, around about 20, um, sharing the screen, I, that's me, I think you can see, at uh, the third grade Windsor State. Yeah, there I was when I was 20, uh, in with three guys, and we set up our own studio after, so I just scroll across, after this film came out, blow up, we all decided that this is the best way to uh, pick up girls. Uh, so we set up a studio and each ran out and bought a camera, and away we went from there. Um, you know, some of us bought Nikon, some I bought a Hasselblad with my $3,000 inheritance because uh, my mother had just died and so uh, I took off with that but uh, friends bought Minolta's because of um, David Hamilton in those days and Sam Haskins with touting Pentax and Nikon of course with David Hemmings. I'll go back to to me, stop share, um, right so, uh, you know, then I decided I wanted to get into art direction um, and sort of wanted to uh, become an art director, but uh, that wasn't going to be because of my mother dying. And so I joined an advertising agency and through uh, contacts and hard work, I ended up in a film company. And then um, from there, uh, went overseas and with my cameras, um, but I wasn't that passionate. I mean, I was shooting life and shooting bits and pieces, not, not as full time as I'm doing now, but um, uh, I've just got to go and get something else now. Yeah, well, this is America. You know, I really saw that two old people sitting there with us. I thought that was cool. That's another one of my trademarks, you know, looking at the obvious little, you know, um, thing in the wall. Um, uh, that, oh, this, you see one, if you can see a screen on the right, I, 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 I quickly, uh, I needed to put all these up at the same size, uh, but I didn't. Um, so I'm sorry for that. Um, there's another one with sold, sold, sold. And as you see, one's um, slightly upside down. Um, 
that one is one of my favorites with all those cars squashed in it makes it a little bit obvious that it's uh, squashed um, there was a portrait i took within the apartment we uh, rented in los angeles in 1973 and as you see on the right there's another one of my juxtaposed things which i really liked uh, and and still do that to this day um, and there was another couple another funny thing like a parking meter with a seat right in front of it i don't know why and um, something i snapped at a caulfield race meeting um one time i was looking for shots so uh so that's that's there now um I'll, I'll leave that hang on stop share right um i think i'm going too fast am i um no <laughs> um i'm a bit nervous so here we go um next um so i i i spent 40 years in in the cutting room and uh running a business and um ended up with 42 staff and uh uh, uh two officers and i in the end burnt myself out uh, i'd always carry the camera with me and uh at every opportunity just to uh, let off steam as it were I'd, I'd walk around the block or i'd you know walk uh, 200 yards just to uh, punch a wall or take a photograph you know just to uh, because dealing with deadlines and being back room you know you were um, you were pushed and pushed and pushed and there was always that last minute uh I guess uh, uh, effort to get it to the station or get it on air, but um, uh, what I was going to say, uh, I suppose from all of that, I we were dealing with analog, and analog in Australia with chemical, you know, electrochemical processing was terrible. We were so far behind the world. Uh, so in 1992, I embraced um, digital technology and bought the second um, AVID system, a, a digital editing system that worked on Mac. I couldn't, I couldn't hack PC because it was just too complicated for me. I needed to just click and drag ch children's stuff, like which Apple sort of afforded us. So um, I embraced that because I then could change things i i had complete creative um control and being an editor you and like with a, a photographer you can change the point of a, a show or sorry a, of a scene or a picture by tone by you know a tone in an ad you could tone change the tone by color or by sound with a, a, a with a uh, a picture you really can change the tone by color again to black and white which i really love so today i mean i've been scanning through a lot of my old shots and realized that i i really really love the analog feel of of film of that of that grain slightly soft patina that velvet feel uh yet i love the processing of digital i mean the fact that i can clean all the marks off it or you know um, get into such accuracy with uh, highlighting or dodging and burning uh, to create a mood uh, and certainly i mean i never when i was processing and printing black and white i never got into color but um i never got into the multi-grade stocks with ilford and stuff i mean I wasn't that uh, intent on processing. I prefer to do it, let other people do that. Uh, um, and I'm, and I suppose that's where I come from too. From being a production person, uh, I love a production. I love 
the combination of talents, you know, me, myself as an editor, a cameraman, a, a director, a, you know, musician and stuff, we all sort of interface and plug in as a one unit, which is fabulous. And I think that's, that's important. Although with street photography, I think we're a lone beast. I, I really don't like walking around with people um, because I don't want to sort of shoot, see through their eyes because the minute you start walking towards a street, you're starting to, with them, you're starting to look through their eyes. You want to look through your own eyes. Um, so it's, I, I'm a bit of a lone wolf uh, when it comes to photography in the street, but in the studio, I'd, I'd readily, you know, if I was going to shoot a studio, I would get a makeup artist. If I, you know, location people who find locations for you is invaluable for a, a photographer or, and, and all of those um, people. I mean, you've only got to look at Jeffrey Crudson, who I admire. I mean, he has a crew of probably 50, 50 people when he shoots one 10 by eight shot, uh, he's got, you know, props, makeup, even, he doesn't even shoot or press the, the, uh, the tit on the, uh, on the cable release. He's got his own cinematographer such. So, and he just purely directs the, the, the photograph. Uh, I, I don't sort of really enjoy that, but, um, anyway, uh, so now, uh, as I said, I, I sort of burnt myself out and uh, uh, got to the stage where um, I'd had enough and uh, trying to control 42 staff and I, it just wasn't going anywhere. So uh, I decided to uh, uh, bail out and uh, sell the company to the staff and uh, sort of worked on for another three years until they got sick of me and they had to get rid of me then. <laughs> but uh, at that stage, I was uh, embracing um, more and more the photography side. And I happened to uh, buy a book uh, called Street Photography, or actually my son gave it to me for um, a birthday present. And with that, uh, there was, a group on Flickr called Street Photography Now Project starting up. And that was in, I think it was 2011. And each week they gave you a, uh, a brief, like uh, shoot your best friend or, you know, shoot from a bus, shoot. Uh, so you had 52, we had across a year, we had 52 briefs, one each week. And um, that was fabulous. I, I just learned so much because each brief was given by either Nick Turpin or Matt Stewart or a, a whole lot of other soapy, Sophie Howarth, I think her name is, um, sort of leaders in that street photography field, um, Gibson and so on and so forth. So um, they taught you like, look ahead and also look around, look behind you. So as you're walking, just stop and look around because sometimes there's a shot following you and you don't realize that. Look below you, look above, look around. You're sort of, um, sometimes I get nearly run over <laughs> looking for uh, a shot. And a lot of times, like you see Cartier Bresson running. I mean, I've done that where I've actually pulled up in the car and got out and ran chasing someone. Um, because sometimes you, I mean, you can travel a lot faster in a car or you sit, cover a lot of ground. And I certainly did that over the years um, of, in my retirement. And fortunately my, um, uh, one of uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, she lived in Footscray. So uh, I, I, learned to travel all over the West. Um, not as good as um, that guy, Kirk, uh, what's his name? Um, the Westographer, I mean, who's brilliant. If you see his work, he's traveled all over the West. But 
I certainly found my little bits and pieces. Um, um, so I, I can't complain. Anyway, I mean, it's all luck of the draw and, you know, sometimes it's serendipity. Sometimes it's just, I don't know, you just, I, sometimes I just turn down a street and there it is, there's a shot or, or you know, you wait a little bit longer and I mean, I, I do all those sorts of things. Like I sit and wait, I, I set up, well, not set up so much. I mean, I have thought of doing that, you know, putting a 50 cent coin on the ground and watch people pick them up or something. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, but, um, you know, you follow things like Elliot Irwitt, who used, used to use a little horn to get the attention of people. Um, those sorts of things make uh, life interesting and, and get a surprise element from people, a bit more of an expression. Um, then uh, I, I, I did a, um, I, I suppose also what I've done is uh, I, I also looked into Lightroom and love that because of the keywording. And so as I keyword certain things like um, I might be two chairs, so I call that a pair, of course, uh, I might bottles, seagulls, so on and so forth, the basic things, or it might be red, the colours. So after a while, you've got like 200 keywords and all of a sudden you start building collections with each of those. So in 1994, I, I covered i have been collecting christo shots which are like all these wrapped wrapped cars wrapped objects there was tarpaulins there was um, you know traffic lights covered there was things taped up so that was all i i love christo and then i got into that uh from christo i got into covered cars and so in 2003 13 I had a show um, in um, at the color factory where I uh, brought all my covered cars and uh, together um, they uh, I an art a critic said uh, that I couldn't write uh, <laughs> the, the bit in my book that I produced but I could take photographs that was art blart a mr uh, a guy from RMIT Anyway, I then uh, did another course and I was doing, uh, um, I was looking around for courses and I did a course in, um, uh, in Photo Frio with Trent Park, which is fabulous. Um, I, I urge anyone to do any course with a Magnum photographer. Um, certainly worthwhile. Uh, and he taught me a lot and uh, Although he couldn't, uh, he couldn't understand where I was coming from because I was um, doing odd things with my photographs in terms of how I was sequencing, uh, sequencing them to a poem by Gina Reinhardt. So he couldn't get my his head around that. Anyway, but that's that's all right. You've got to do it yourself, and um, you've you've only got to uh, uh, yeah, you are number one. So you've got to make sure you're comfortable with yourself. I, I don't worry about other people. As long as one person's clapping, that's all. <clears throat> it's well worth it. I'm, I'm not a, I don't need the whole world. I set out when I was 20, if I can make one person smile, I've done the job. So, so if I, if a lot of people don't understand, uh, sometimes the, the jokes, uh, <clears throat> some are obvious, some are not, some are, you know, a little bit kooky, but uh, yeah, then I, I, I then went, tried to get a, another job with, uh, how are we going for time? Oh, okay. Uh, and I went overseas to India for a month by myself. And uh, in that stage, I, I took uh, in one month the, uh, the sum of 10 months work. So I, Normally I was shooting about a thousand shots a month, but when I went to India for one 
month, I shot over 14,000 shots, uh, which I still haven't edited properly yet. <laughs> I've got a whole swag of them, but I haven't sequenced them or I don't sort of really, they're just a lot of pretty shots, a lot of color. I mean, you can't go wrong shooting in India, you know, it's, it's a lot harder to try and find these shots in Melbourne um, or any capital city or in, even in a country town, like even Geelong or, uh, you know, Bendigo, I think it'd be very difficult. Um, I certainly know, you know, you've got to be able to scour the papers and get all these online uh, newsletters and things to, to really find out a location or where you're going to go. Anyway, uh, so uh, after all this time, I then have got to this point where I thought, hmm, uh, I could put it all together in some sort of <coughs> sequence rather than, and call it when I said 3,000 streets, and that means both, I've traveled probably over 3,000 streets or more, and also the postcode of Melbourne being 3,000. So, um, so that was that. Now, uh, the, the process was quite easy to find the shots that I'd Props entered in a lot of competitions and things like that. So over the years, I've got folders with um, keeps and four stars, three stars. So <clears throat> the the trick was then was to um, put it uh, into a sequence, and that was uh, the hard thing, uh, although it was quite easy when we, I learnt that from Trent Park, you know, stick it on a wall or on a, a long bench and, and uh, then mount it into a book and uh, flick through it and then leave it lying around for a couple of days. I don't think you can sequence it in a, uh, in a computer. You may be good, but I can't. Anyway, it was great to have it a visual. Um, and uh, what I was going to say is uh, <coughs> it helped because I, I, I started off with a shot, but I didn't actually have an end shot. And only when I put it out on the wall that it finally came to me. Um, it was sort of like staring me, whereas it wasn't in a folder somewhere or in the computer somewhere. It was sitting there on the bench as you sorted them out. You know, you had ins and outs and they were there. So it was, um, it was uh, hands on. Um, so where am I going? Yeah, okay, well, I'll now um, take you through this book. Um, I was gonna have this show in, um, um, was it May, May 5th, but, um, and I thought, you know, and I started the book just before Christmas. Uh, <laughs> it's still not printed. Um, I'm glad the COVID crisis happened because uh, uh, we're only just um, checking the cover today. Um, so that's, you know, nine months. So it, it, it will take 10 or 11 months to produce a book from go to woe, you know, and I've got I've had a guy helping me, um, Stan Jaron, who's pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you, you think it's sort of pretty straightforward, but there's, uh, there's little issues, you know, like, um, you know, type, size, color, you know. <coughs> and also uh, the fact is that, you know, printed, sometimes uh, the shots don't look as good. So out of 80 shots, I had to redo about 15. I went through CPL and we did a, a like a, a proof run, <coughs> you know, 10 by eights with my uh, corrections. And I think I got about 15 that um, had to be re, just retweaked. 
I started off with this shot because it had won a prize uh, at CCP and uh, as being the humorous show. Uh, I also decided to put um, uh, titles on each uh, in my handwriting. Uh, I, I experimented with that because I thought it, it adds, people liked it because I, it added an element of humour, uh, gave them a little bit more. Um, is that one? So, crap when we go to this. Uh, can you see that? Yep. yep. So, what the crap goes to the behind of the cattle to the pigeon and then to the bird art as i call it um then white goes to white umbrellas umbrellas to umbrellas to wind um to change the changes in the air to singing in the rain uh this one was um, just right outside my front gate one day. I, he was lying there sunbaking. Oh, I thought that was quite good. So sometimes you don't have to go far if, you, if you've got your camera with you. This one, I just waited and waited until someone came. Um, uh, so that was, worked out well. This was in a comedy show. I thought I liked the big noses there. Uh, see them. This one, uh, yep. Well, that one was in Rome uh, this uh, last year, and that was from India. Um, I must admit, I did see this shot in another Marcek, or there's a guy who does a lot of tours through India, uh, the Polish guy, and he did a similar shot, so I've copied him. Uh, so it's a threesome at the dog show, leading onto a dog, pizza pooch. How are we going for time? All right, yeah. This is London. Uh, it's, I like that. Um, all hanging onto each other like elephants. Uh, they held, hang on to each other's tail. This one, I sort of pulled up. I saw one shot in the car and uh, got my wife to drive around the block to, to get it. And then as we pulled up, I looked across the road and these people were coming out of the church. So again, it's serendipity. If you see something, you more than likely catch something else. This one is close to where I live and, and just saw them coming down the street and about to cross. So I, I jumped out at the, cross, at the crossing and uh, snapped that. Uh, that was in uh, Darwin. Uh, and of course, our own Fed Square with the Feds. <laughs> um, oops, that was in Tokyo. She was uh, clapping and they were taking their own photographs of leaving in the air. This one, uh, it's just unbelievable, just walked around it in India, around and found this shot just around the corner, just the day I was leaving. So again, serendipity, just keep going out, walking around. And this I waited, of course, because of the, uh, the atlas with the world. Uh, so I just waited for something to come along. Sometimes I'll go maybe three times. I'll always pass. I don't necessarily have to wait there all day, but I'll, I'll just just check in uh, at shots, at, at places that I like. Uh, you know, one particular one in Kensington, which is not here today, but I, you know, I went back about six times until I got it. But when I look at it, it looks fake anyway. Uh, well, hang on, something happened there. This one was just happening at Preston Market. This one was at um, at Deniliquin at the um, 
which I'd love to go back there again. Everyone should go there to the uh, Denny Ute muster. Uh, she was a little bit odd. <laughs> I love that though. And then I paired that, of course, because she's in a bridal outfit, sort of, and there's another one. And I think she was just wiping some grit out of her eye, but I caught it at the right time, and I called that the wrong man. This one, um, Urban Outfitter Works, sort of. <laughs> this one, Hot Under the Collar. Uh, this one, of course, on the show and um, a little bit better with the steam coming out of his, out of his uh, nostrils. That was in Queensland. That's in Flinders Street, just seems to work. That was in a back alleyway in Camberwell. Again, just wandering around, going up and down lanes that you might never sort of think of going there, but you find something. And this just happened, one shot and it was gone, you know, at Saigon Zoo. Uh, I was, this is, I found this looking for covered cars in um, the back streets of Sydney and saw this. <laughs> and this was in um, Footscray, uh, a memorial, seems a waste. Um, I went back again to get a better light on it, but it had gone, someone had pulled it down. So again, when you see something, you have to shoot it, even if it's bad light or whatever. Um, I've turned it into black and white or do something with it. This one, uh, I love. It's, I have another sequence called, um, uh, sorry, another book that I want to do called Missing Letters. And this will be part of that, uh, where letters are missing or dropped off or stolen or, yeah just worn away. It's just a guy in Fitzroy. This won an award again for humour. Uh, at the CCP, they seem to like me there. I like that. He was, a, in other words, one of those characters that live in the city or frequent the city. I don't know whether he's there anymore. These guys were at Docklands seems to be doing the, this one, uh, uh, I got questioned about that at Tullamarine Airport. Again, you've got to be quick in and out. Well, going back, uh, I waited a long time for this shot, finally got it. It's gone now, <laughs> the, I mean the poster. Uh, this was in the Hyde Park in Sydney. This guy was just tooling around, just, just exercising. I think he loved his body a lot. This guy was at Richmond Citizens Park. I don't know. He used to go around. Uh, I used to see him a lot because I walked a dog there a lot, a lot of the times. And he was just praying as Buddhist. I think he was levitating or trying to. Um, again, another shot. How are we going for time? Yes. I'll hurry up a bit. Um, Babushka, I waited several times for that one. Uh, that was, I liked that, but the sheets, one's a live sheet. This guy, I decided to walk. I was running late and I said, no, I'll walk to the, everyone could wait because we were going for lunch uh, for dinner or something like that. And, and there it was just waiting for me. <laughs> that was out the window of a hotel in Hanoi. And this one, I, I waited for this, saw it was about to happen. Someone didn't like it in Sydney uh, and sort of criticized it and said, but I, I think it's just wonderful. I mean, I think they don't see the, the attitude and, and everything else. Maybe the person saw it was a cheap shot. I don't know. I, I rather like it. I love this one, the boys in the hood, just snapped that. That's with an Olympus. I have three cameras. I have a Leica, um, a Nikon, and I you say, well, what do you have a Nikon for? It's so heavy, but uh, I need a, a, a 70. I, I like Nikon, I've always had Nikon. 
that's from uh, Footscray Market uh, in Italy. You know, wherever that is, uh, India, the bookworm. Again, heavy and light sleepers. I like that. And manly cover up. <laughs> And the towels work with the towels, of course. And this one was in Paris. His Rolex and cigars. There's a lovely story there with the uh, cigars and his Rolex watch. That was out at uh, Oakley. I love to get my lamb and uh, <laughs> some veggies out there at Oakley Market. I think they were just rearranging the bread, but when I caught her, she looked as though she was having Holy Communion. Um, another missing, uh, I have another series where there's missing feet, missing legs, one-legged people. Uh, I have, um, you know, 20 or 30 of those. I'll do something with it. Um, in odd indecision, saffron. This one was the market, just a lucky shot. Two minutes ago, that's the Springvale, just wonderful. I, there's a there's a, a mini golf thing I've got to go back and off Queens Road. It's quite amazing if anyone drives past there. I just note these places as if I have to go back there one day when there's more people. Yeah, this was in New York, yeah, St Kilda. You know, this is in 101 Collins Street. Some other people have done some really nice shots as well. I, I did this, you know, four or five, seven years ago. Uh, Hanoi, uh, Japan, um, Tokyo. This is the one that they liked at uh, Life Framer in the American thing. I, I, I stop entering a lot of competitions because it's just like a lottery and the end of the day. But what it does do is it creates a body of work. And I think you have to keep continue to enter if you can. I know it's money, but you in the end finish work because in a lot of, for many, many years, I had no, no end in sight or no end plan for any of the work. Now I'm rushing to finish it all and, and, and to complete a lot of these loose ends. Um, so it's very important to, to complete work, complete jobs, enter them, and then you have a, a final print. Uh, then your folio comes from that. Um, this is uh, Paris, Italy. This is a film many, many years ago. Uh, Singapore airport, Dandenong, New York, Hong Kong, uh, Honoribia in uh, Spain, the zoo <laughs> just happened. I was sitting there and that, that happened. I was waiting for him to do something and she come, came by serendipity again. This is on a shoot. Um, and uh, it, was, it was for a, a drink drive commercial. Um, and they were at a pub and they were dressed up. So it was fortuitous that this happened there. And this is the end shot. We started off with the uh, formerly arrested and this shot here with all the, the crap around it. <laughs> I thought it was a big joke. Anyway, that's the end of the book. And my travels continue. Um, so just going back to stop the share. I think uh, we're now, do you want to do, uh, questions or anything like that? It's sure, just, no worries. Uh, um, are we doing, or do I can show you some more if you want, or? Yeah, just sure. them, probably. Go, Mike, off you go, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll just do some other random stuff that I've got. Um, uh, this, these are not, I, I wouldn't say these are my greatest, you know, they're just sort of ideas I see, you know, you, you, you know, I might, um, oh, no, 
so this shot here where they got, I think these have got different uh, sizes, I'm afraid. I didn't make them all the same pixel size. There we go. Good uh, sorry, yeah. Did, so, did you see any of those? Uh, um, None of them, mate. Go back to the start. Yeah, that's the start one. That's that's in Paris. So I just saw that across the road and uh, sort of upside down heaven. <laughs> uh, this one with the, the drink cups, you know, just in Richmond. Fed Square with the, the man being touched up, sort of thing. Um, she's uh, talking to a wooden dummy at the show. That's part of my Covered Cars series, you know, just with the, the woman looking into the car. Sort of a bit of fun. There's Minnie the Mouse. I sort of jumped off a tram. I saw that coming down uh, Chapel Street and uh, jumped off, ran back and, and took that when she was waiting there. This was in, uh, in Spain again. Um, just the, the humor of that I like. Uh, this is in, I, I, I'd love to go back to India and they've got this fetish over there with, with men's innerwear or, or vests. You know, there were so many ads traveling across India with, with all these men in vests. It was sort of like, there was no sexy women's underwear. It was just all these men in, in innerwear, they called it. So I thought that'd be a great subject to do, you know. Uh, this one was in London, the man just traveling past, similar haircuts, I thought. This was a back street in uh, Hanoi, just again going where the, the population lives or the people are, you know, not, not the high street, not where all the tourists are, but go where life is behind the, the main streets. This one, I went back for the, the boxer, Sylvester Stallone, uh, the place is gone now, but they had these out there and this man was moving it. it looked as though he was ducking. Um, and just the man here doing his bench press and his relationship to the man here. I waited for this shot with the bike, with the, um, the stuff on the balloons that came along. I thought that was pretty good. Um, that's a, that's about it. So. Great. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Pleasure. Lovely. Uh, so I think I met you back in 2017 when we were both on the Project Street or 7.30. 7.30, yeah, 7.30. I think we were both fighting over a, <laughs> a guy trying. Yeah, he's stealing a, 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 a desk. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks so much, Mike. Um, yeah. I, guess, I guess in um, street photography, we talk about the two Fs. There's fishing and following. What would you say your style is? Oh, both. <laughs> uh, oh, the, yeah, they say Fs, uh, three Fs, isn't it? The other one is fuck, you've got to be ready. <laughs> you know, it's just happening and so many times it, it it, you know, as I said, you, you're fishing and then you might be across the other side of the street. Like I, I still today kick myself because I saw a, um, you know, a man with a, uh, dressed in a, um, a gridiron, like an American football, um, outfit at the top end of Collins street. Oh, and I was just too far away, you know, and I, I kicked myself not being, you know, ready for it, you know. Um, so, but I have followed people all the way from the library down to Flinders Street Station. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do everything. Yeah, w would you say there are any magnets, I guess, in the urban landscape that attract your eye and so you've, you're off, you're following them? Uh, well, as I said, that you know, where you find, you find them in the in the, in odd places. Um, uh, 
like it's just just walk walk down a back street i, I mean i i don't know you, you it's hard to say there's no i mean with the magnet you'd say well you go to a, a street festival and that's a magnet but you know sometimes you've got to go really early to see them setting up or or really late i mean sometimes there's too many people there depending on what you want to shoot uh i don't know i i I think I just wear, wear back streets is my favorite because that's where you find the odd, like where you and I found that man stealing the desk. It, it was in little Col little Burke street. Little Burke, that's right. You know, it wasn't in, it wasn't in Burke street. Nothing happens in Burke street. It's all in little Burke street, you know, or, or, you know, in, in the small lanes and things like that. It, I mean, unless you want, you know, like un unless you're on race day, yes, they're, they're, they're hanging around the, the hotels and, uh, and the railway station. But I see so many people, I mean, I walk past the railway station, don't get me wrong, but I, it's been done. Uh, and I applaud people who can do it in a different light in a way, or, a, you know, I mean, sometimes you, I saw a street photographer who, who just shot in the rain and it was just brilliant. You know, he just went out in, in pouring rain and I'd love to do that. I mean, not many, a lot of photographers are like, oh, it's too cold today or it's too hot, you know, oh, no, I'll stay in, you know, no, get out, you know. Yeah. Um, you don't be a fair weather photographer, you know. We've got a question here from Terry. He asks, you mentioned keywording. How important is it and what is your approach? Well, <clears throat> it's, it's, I guess keywording is very important to either find things be, again, because you might remember, oh, that shot that had the balloon in it, or I remember it had something red, or, you know, it, it allows you to find shots and also to sequence them together. If you could do, uh, you know, colors, uh, as I said, it depends on how far you want to go into it. You know, you could do, you know, 30 keywords, you know, like, on, you know, the color of the shoe, the, the B, you know, the, all the colors in there. But I, 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 a lot of times just say like, cap hat balloon you know a cigarette or, or a color something that's prominent uh and then later on you might f i have to go back and re-look at them you know but um i it's that's why i like uh, lightroom is that you can put as many as you like and then change them if you want um it's so easy but it's it's good to do those collections because I think we've all had stamp or maybe not all stamp collection, coin collections, you know, and then it's, it's the same with photographs. It's the same with people, you know, big ears, little ears, nose, uh, funny eyes, glasses, you know, and then all of a sudden you, you'll see this pattern and stuff and then you start to, and it's amazing, like when you start collecting, you start seeing things, you might go after, oh, I'm gonna go and look for people with binoculars. And you go, right, but not, and then all of a sudden you st start to see things with hats or with something else, so it leads you on. So <clears throat> what I'm saying, if you have a purpose, you, you, you get out there to do it, it will drive you, and then you'll start to see other things, you know. Uh, you know, it's like like painting or, or discovering art and things like that. You start to see a world around you. You see to get into it, like books. And the more and more you do it, the more you keyword, the more you see, the more you you'll take in, and you you know you get visually you'll get, you'll get in tune with the whole world, and you'll see things that no one else can see. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, Mike, you've got a great collection of books behind you there. Yeah. Uh, what's your all-time favourite book? Oh, um, 
probably uh, early ones that I had was uh, by Gary Winogran. <coughs> um, I, I suppose when I started out, I, I was very graphical because I wanted to be a, a designer. So uh, Ernst Hass was another ph American photographer. He shot very, very strong color. Um, I always shot, I had a point when I go overseas, I'd have a, <clears throat> a Nikon FM2 with uh, Kodachrome in it, which I just did purely for pretty shots and colorful shots, you know, um, patterns or signs and things. And then I had a, another camera, which I took black and white with. But uh, um, I, I guess uh, it changes. I mean, I, I, I suppose a lot of the earlier stuff that you had, which was um, Walker Evans is another one of my favorites. Um, Strand and Steiglitz, Steiglitz and uh, <coughs> not so much. Um, I, I mean, I enjoy, um, what do you call it, um, landscape, but but maybe uh, not, I, I like, you know, deteriorated landscapes rather than um, pretty landscapes, you know. Something, I, I think it has to tell a story. Uh, I think every photograph has to tell a story. Uh, it has, then it has some meaning. Uh, otherwise, it's just a pretty shot. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, with the books, uh, <clears throat> I love all my books. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good to, to revisit. I mean, these days I, I do collect odd ones, which are, um, are different productions, you know, with the ones that are concertina books and different ideas, because I'm, I'm trying to embark on this new one where I'm trying to uh, for late next year, I'm trying to create a road surface on paper. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to use um, different techniques with uh, embossing and debossing. I know, it, uh, but I'm having a lot of fun trying to push printers and people to uh, to a new um, degree of um, refinement in, in, in trying to create this tactile surface. But I'm, I'm not getting any takers at the moment. I used to do it in film and stuff, and I was able to have a company which really looked after me, but I, I don't know any really good printers at the moment that will sort of entertain my whims and, uh, you, know, it's, 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 you know, it's hard to find someone with all the right equipment. Uh, it's so specialised, this uh, spot UV, Printing. I mean, I, I got a book the other day with uh, oh, the, one of my favourites was William Eggleston. Again, um, his latest book called SX70 or the Polaroids, a just amazing book. And the way it's printed, you'd swear it was a SX70 print on the page, but it's just done with printing. So I, <clears throat> I hope to do something like that for my um, book called uh, um, Arterial. <laughs> There's no street photography. It's just it's an art form. I'm this I'm just sort of I have to get this thing out of my head because I used to shoot all this ground on um, in every uh, capital city where I'd be shooting uh, just the the ground, the the road surface all broken up, the white lines and jagged this and that. So I've got um, you know. 3,000 shots of, of road services, which I've got to congeal into a, a show and a book. So that's later in the year, next 2021. <laughs> when we can go have exhibitions again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm the 18th of February, 2021, I've got 45 downstairs booked. So uh, hopefully. Yeah. It'd be rock and rolling, you know. Let's hope. Yeah. Uh, I've got a few other questions here that have come in, Mike, in yeah. particular. Um, so what would you say your favourite lens or focal length is, as well as uh, what's your preferred camera settings in regards to aperture 
and shutter speed. Right. Well, I, I mean, I prefer to shoot around F4 and I try, I, because I like the Nikon, um, I use a, a 24 to 70. Obviously, I, uh, if I'm in close, <coughs> like a tram, or I'm in, in a busy street, I'll, I'll use the 28 mil uh, on, the, on the Leica, the uh, Q2, which I really love. And I, but I also have a, um, an Olympus with a touch uh, focus back uh, on the screen. And I use that if I'm sitting next to someone, I can actually turn the camera around facing him and I can hit the screen and take a photograph without him knowing. Uh, I do that. Um, but what I normally do is uh, I set the, the aperture to F4 around about that. Uh, I try not to, <clears throat> I try not to let the, the camera go under 125th and I let the ISO range up and down. So uh, I use the, you know, the computer and the camera to um, take my shot. And I don't worry about grain or anything like that. If it goes up to 12,000 ASA, quite happy. I don't, um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a purist. I think sometimes digital is just too sharp to, uh, you, I think we're all been going after sharpness and I think we need to step back a bit and, and even, I don't know. I think it's just too sharp. Is <laughs> I, yeah, what I'm saying is sometimes I, I when I when I dodge and burn, I'm actually manipulating the focus, and I'll actually blur things out, soft, you know, just give it a slight softness, and and just the other day I just sharpened the glasses, just the the glasses only, and then all the rest was softer, so I just sharpened that and his eyeballs. So when you look at it, you go, oh. oh he hasn't sharpened everything, but it looks sharp because you're looking at the eyes. So anyway, but a lot of times I can't hold the camera that steady because <laughs> I mean, a, a Nikon is, is quite heavy and I have to jam it against my um, forehead to actually steady it. I learned that trick that, um, but of course, if you're shooting at, you know, 8,000 ASA, <laughs> at 2.8 or F4 and <coughs> not shooting below 250th, you're pretty well guaranteed you get it in <coughs> focus. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, if it's, if you get the shot and it's there, it's soft, it's fine. I, uh, as long as, uh, I don't know, <laughs> make it smaller. <laughs> don't, don't blow it up too big. <laughs> what's another any other questions yeah we've got uh, a couple more so yep. we've got a question here from betty and she says do you delete the not so good photos after no. you select no so she never says, never never Fourteen thousand you took in india never deleted any of them wow because no, I, I learned that we're again um Good editing, like I found when I was a film editor, uh, the, the, the your job is only done when you've gone back through all your rushes. You've got to go back through all your photographs because that's what editing is. You, you, you might have picked one photograph for a reason, but when you put it up against another shot it, it, in a book, say, or it mightn't live next door to it. Maybe the other shot would. So the one that you maybe was a little bit blurred or but had the right eyes. I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm like a magpie, I keep everything. Uh, I, I've seen and I've read in my books where people have gone back and they've seen something in the corner and they've blown it up and it's just been perfect, like birds on a wire. You know, you might 
the other day I was blowing up something. I said, oh my God, look at that. That's just beautiful. It was like an out of focus shape. But I saw it was a man and a hat. But if you could, you, you could blow up, you go through and look at all your shots for out of focus shapes. Uh, quite amazing. If you look at an out of focus thing, you still read it, even though it's out of focus, completely out of focus. You say, well, there's a man there and he's doing that or he's, he's fishing. Say if a man's throwing a line, he's completely out of focus. You, you still tell he's fishing. So what I'm saying is that that out of focus shot might work in a whole out of focus book. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you've got to look, re look at it again. When you finish, you go back through all your, all your shots and go, have I missed something? Have I, have I got the best? And you have to redo it. And that's what editing is. That's mm. what, yeah. How many photos do you think you have in your catalog, Mike? I've uh, 260,000. Wow. And I've just finished, you know, doing, um, I had 300 rolls. That's not in counting all the slides I had, like just a black and white. <laughs> I've been going through, but oh, there's a whole lot of shit. And I think we waste, I wasted a lot of those short rolls of film, 36. I think I was a bit, um, you know, drinking or something. I don't know, whatever. I look at them, I go, what, the, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what was I? Oh, anyway. Mike, we've got another question here. So your uh, lovely question from Jim. Here, your images have strong threads of humour, irony and social comment. Does this affect your sequencing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I suppose uh, the irony and the humour, I mean... Um, yeah, uh, uh, there was a, a an ironing board leaned against a tree, uh, and I called it an iron bark. But you know, maybe I'll do a book on trees that have double meanings. Uh, I mean, a lot of my humour, you, you mightn't see it because you go, "What's what's that?" I, I suppose what we did last week when you when the when the girls and uh, um, the collective, you know, and they did paired the two shots, they worked beautifully. Some of those shots that they did and the sequencing there was just brilliant. I was blown away with that. And uh, I think the, the irony sometimes if in one might be subtle, but if you put it next to a, a bigger one, the, the, they play off each other. So uh, um, like in some of those things I had with, uh, you know, cups stuck in the wire perhaps and then sequenced with you know things completely missing you know so it, it strengthens you know one with one without you know so you, you it's a balance i think yeah. i hope i answered that uh, anything else hey, Jim. <laughs> um one last question mike so yeah. the book is looking great the which one the book, your yeah. book, yeah. Uh, is looking great. Will you be doing any pre-orders? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm printing um, 250. I uh, haven't set the price yet, but I'll probably... I, I will do pre-orders. Um, uh, I hope people like it. I did show it... I must admit, I did show it to a couple of respectful photographers, and they, they didn't actually... I thought... Really weird. They didn't. They didn't say anything about any of the shots. They didn't say anything about. Oh, great! You, you got some great shots there, Mike. All they said they picked. They picked the fact that it was too long, and and too many pages and too many photographs. And I went, oh, all right, whatever. <laughs> but they 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 wouldn't even say like, oh, you got really good shots there, Mike. That they never gave me any what not one compliment. So I'm not going to show it to anyone. I, I'm glad you liked it. If people like what I've shown tonight. That's that's what I mean. Like you can show it to people. 
not that I, I don't mind people say negative things. I learn from negative. I wish people could give you honest feedback. I think today's world, we're getting too many high fives, ticks, flags, thumbs up, and we're not actually progressing. We're not sort of saying, um, why don't you do it again? Uh, I, I love people to say that to me. I, I, I've been an editor, which has been a backroom boy for a long time. And I've had people say, that's a heap of crap. Re-edit it. You know, I'll be back after lunch. I'm going to lunch. When I get back, it better be better. So I've been criticised. I, I, I think it's good to have criticism. I don't think we all should get ribbons. I think kids today get too many ribbons, too many accolades. They think they can't fail. You have to fail. You have to struggle. You have to, you know, life's not a bowl, a bowl of cherries. You know, it, it, you have to struggle. Um, and um, anyway, I, I wish, you know, if people said, well, I don't, I think those shots are terrible or that's wrong or you, I mean, I don't, I don't agree with sexism and misogyny and, and, and yes, yeah, that, that's, that's things today, but I'm, that's, I, I come from another era, so, uh, you know, I've been growing up with, you know, sexism and a whole lot of other things. So that's still ingrained in me. It's not going to change me. Uh, um, and I, I say, well, look, I, 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 I didn't put the shot of the slippery when wet in the, uh, in the exhibition because it might offend someone. So I've taken that out of the exhibition, but it's in the book. You know, if you don't like it, you can glue the pages together, right? <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. How many pages is the book? Uh, it's 80. Uh, and I was told by these two well-known, and you all know them, uh, they said it should be 50 pages. I don't, I don't know how you get the 50 pages, you know. Anyway. So I don't know. Yeah, but I think what you have to do is you don't don't do what the other people say. Do it how you feel. I'm doing it how I feel. This is me. This is my humour. This is my take on life. This is my the way I do it. I don't have to do it the way um, you know you know someone else at, 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 in public does it, or or someone else in at Magnum does it. You know, you do it yourself. Do it your way. Yeah, mm. definitely. I think that's the beauty of art, that it's yes. your idea. Yeah, it's your idea. Stay with it. Be... Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. Are there any more questions? That was the last question, Mike. If there's no okay. more, we're back to you, Russ. Thank you very much, Sue. Oh, you asleep. Russell, did you fall asleep? No, I just... I you just were, you were falling asleep. I'm technically challenged like you, Mike. I think something must have rubbed off here tonight. I don't know. <laughs> just couldn't get the unmute button happening. But, look, well, mate, thanks very much tonight. You, just, you didn't disappoint. Um, I, I love your work. I always get a laugh out of stuff. I actually, I was laughing out loud with some of that, um, with some of those images and the sequencing. I thought it was brilliant, mate. So... <laughs> I loved it. Um, You're a good fellow. I, I like the, the reference to that Westography book. I, I, I just went to my bookshelf and got it there too. Fabulous. And I haven't looked through it. And I mean, the cover set is... Oh, no. But I think that's really important too. It's like, um, you mentioned it before, you take something as, as you see it, because it might not be there the following day. And that's what yeah. the street's all about to me. There's a lot of portraiture in that, that book, but there's a lot of history there too. And there's a lot of just beautiful photography in that. So, um, yeah, it's a uh, street. Street is just, you can go anyway with it. It's just fantastic. Yeah, it is. Anyway, um, one last question for me, yeah. mate. And uh, all I can say is you were a good looking rooster back in the day. What happened? So, what? <laughs> You were a good rook looking rooster back in the day. What happened? Ah. <laughs> oh, it was cigarettes, whiskey, and wild, wild women. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, mate. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to check out more of Mike's work, um, you can go to the members send, uh, section of the Aspie website, or you can check out Mike's Insta feed at, at Mike Reed Photo. 
And speaking of Instagram, check out our Aspie Insta feed. There's a lot of nice images being posted for our monthly challenge of shapes. And further information on what's going on with us, Aspie, check out our membership uh, and uh, oh, check out our webpage at aspie.com.au. And just finally, join us next week for our guest speaker, Melbourne-based photographer, Denise Laurie. Denise will take us on a journey through the creation of her recent oh, body of work, Melbourne, Lanes, Streets and Arcade. Uh, Denise is a conceptual artist and she will share how she uses street photography genre to explore her concepts and ideas. So uh, join us at the same time next week for another entertaining evening. So see you all then. Stay safe and good night.